Hey, what's up, Doc? This is my post on Artemisia annua and everything I've learned about it with respect to the coronavirus. Please excuse me while I finish chewing my carrot. Here we go. Artemisia annua. A few months ago, there were speculations about the efficacy of a certain plant called Artemisia annua against coronavirus. The speculations were based on its efficacy against diseases that had similar symptoms and the wide range of uses it has in treating infections. Since then, some research has been carried out in a German lab, and it suggests that Artemisia annua combined with coffee is highly effective against coronavirus in cell cultures. Anecdotal stories of coronavirus treatment with Artemisia annua have also been circulating. While one might be skeptical of something that's only effective in cell cultures, this plant is commonly used in folk medicine, and a more jargon-rich description of its mechanisms can be found in the post linked below. I guess I'll try to read through that once this airplane passes. Artemisia annua has a recognized antiviral activity anti-HSV1, poliovirus, RSV, hepatitis C, antivirus, type 2 dengue fever virus, hantavirus, human cytomegalovirus, and anti-HIV in vitro. Thanks to the flavonoids, quercetin and dicaphaeolquinic acids it contains. These molecules have been shown to inhibit the enzyme activity Enzymatica activity of CLP Rho. Oh, sheesh. Okay. The antiviral action of Artemisia annua, which is achieved by stimulating adaptive immunity, regulating the production of the pro inflammatory cytokines, prostaglandin E2, IL6, IL10, TNF alpha, and Increasing the genesis of CD4 and CD8 and interferon gamma involves many minerals and biomolecules, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so somebody has a scientific reason for why this works against viruses in that it keeps your inflammatory response from going crazy and killing you, perhaps. Um, in, but what I find more interesting is that in 2015, a Nobel Prize was given to the researcher who proved that the antimalarial activity of the plant could be used to treat people. But because pharmaceutical companies cannot patent a plant or a tea, I bought the seeds off of the internet, um, they spread misinformation that the medicinal compound was not soluble in water and that it must be processed into pill form for it to be effective. Hmm. Nevertheless, decades of use as a tea proved all of the pharmaceutical company's assertions wrong. I mean, people who work for public relations for these sorts of companies should just be ashamed of themselves. There are many types of Artemisia plants, and perhaps the most famous of all of them is Artemisia absinthe. It, is, it was used in a drink that soldiers used to treat malaria, and when they bought, brought the drink back home because they enjoyed its hallucinatory psychoactive effects. 
The more um, European version of this plant is Artemisia vulgaris, better known as mugwort, and it's a, sold as a tea that can improve digestion and lucid dreaming and creativity. And then, of course, um, all of this vermouth, wormwood. It's, um, it also contains this, and it was used as a medicinal sort of drink when it was invented, but people enjoyed drinking it so much that now we have lots of vermouth. And you mix it with tonic water, which has quinine, which is also an, is that an anti-malarial also? Artemisia annua. The plant that I specially went on the internet and bought seeds for um, is the most potent of the medicinal varieties. It is native to China and it is not known for its psychoactive effects, unlike Artemisia absinthe. It is used as a treatment for fever, cancer, colds, flus, fungal infections, worms, and most popularly, malaria. The dosage for malaria is to brew a liter of strong tea that steeps for at least 20 minutes, and then you should drink it all before the active components degrade. When this treatment is carried out over the course of a week, so every day, uh, the duration and intensity of malaria is dramatically reduced, or at least the disease course is shortened by several days. The reason that Artemisia annua seems to have the best medicinal profile is that it is high in a drug called artemisinin, which is the active ingredient in a common pill given for malaria. Artemisia annua has about five times more artemisinin compared to Artemisia vulgaris or Artemisia absinthe. And when I started looking into this story about these plants, I, of course, looked online to see where these things could be purchased. And I found that Artemisia vulgaris, or mugwort, and Artemisia absintha, which is wormwood, are widely available as a tea, but Artemisia annua, which is sweet wormwood, or sweet annie, is not widely sold as a tea although some vendors are selling it as an extract or tincture, and uh, ever since the uh, rumors about it being a coronavirus treatment started spreading. So a couple of months ago, actually now it's about three months, I guess, I went ahead and bought some Artemisia vulgaris, mugwort, and Artemisia absintha, wormwood tea, since they were inexpensive. I also bought a small packet of Artemisia annua, sweet wormwood or sweet annie seeds, which I planted in small plastic pots. I have about 50 of them, and now I have a bunch of baby plants, which if repotted and properly cared for, will grow up to six feet tall over the course of 200 days. Now there are other, um, YouTube videos on how to grow this, I found that they take a long time to germinate and you have to keep them in the shade and moist and then you, the seeds are so small that you can't um, spread them individually in each pot. So you end up with too many plants all together in lots of different pots. And then you might want to try to transplant them from pot to pot which is very difficult to do when they're very small because they're, when the seed sprouts, the taproot just shoots down into the soil really, really far. And you'd have to, you have to dig really far underneath that little tiny, like just two or three leaves on it in order to transplant it. So I think it's a little bit better to wait until they're bigger. You know, I've just been continually trying to transplant mm. them into new um, pots to expand the number of plants I have. And my plan is to just give them to neighbors and people um, if they want to grow them and repot them. By Christmas time, they will have a Artemisia tree, which they can grow up to six feet tall. So it's kind of like a Christmas tree, but that you can hack off um, pieces of it to make 
medicine out of it. I like that idea. It's just, it's sort of a, it's pleasant. Maybe a new holiday tradition. Um, to have an Artemisia or sweet Annie bush growing in your living room at Christmas time in case anybody gets sick. Um, I looked up on the, I read on the internet also that historically people would even take um, an Artemisia tea, mugwort or wormwood or sweet Annie, and they would put it on a sick person's forehead to help them break their fever. I mean, a lot of medicines go through our skin. Of course, if I get sick, I'll be using aspirin, which is willow bark, to control fevers. And I am not anti-technology. I just like the sense that I know what I'm using when I have a plant that I grew myself. Of course, I don't know who sent me the seeds. <laughs> what if they sent me some other plant's seeds and it just looks like the Artemisia on the internet. It's really hard to identify plants. I have this weed growing in my garden and I can't figure out what it is. At first I thought, what could it be? Something poisonous? Is it not poisonous? It kind of looks like hemlock, poison hemlock, but it's too low to the ground and the the, the it, while it does have some purple spots on the stems, they're kind of fuzzy. And I read that hemlock stems are smooth. I'm, I'm terrible at identifying plants. Um, and I, I am kind of, I'm reluctant to buy any kind of tincture from the internet or a tea because people can just relabel things and sell them. And you, there's really no quality control. I've also bought some sage to burn as a smudge. And I have some sage growing outside. I've read that this has been traditionally used to clear out viruses from the air. And uh, there is evidence that the viral load to which you are exposed does have an impact on the severity of the disease. So if you have a house full of sick people, clearing the air may be helpful. And I don't know if you've ever burned a sage leaf. It smells very nice. There's also rosemary, echinacea, lavender, all of those things can be used to make teas, tinctures, and smudges, although I've heard that plain old chamomile tea may be the best medicine for viruses like this. As with all medicines, it is best not to combine them. And even if none of this has any effect, it's, it just is comforting to feel sort of prepared and that you're cultivating something, cultivating a little protective plant that could protect someone. It's just so nice. And um, I wanted to share this with you because I found that it was, I don't know, that I just found it psychologically helpful and it might be helpful for someone else. Thank you for watching this video. I will go back to my regular science content on the in the future. This is sort of a a little deviation. Also in style. I don't know. Thanks for watching.